Hi, I'm Steve from BoatTest.com. Today I'm going to do a performance evaluation of Neptunus Yachts 650F. Neptunus Yachts is a boutique builder passionate about building you the best boat you have ever owned. This Neptunus 650F that we're on today is a CE Category A Ocean Certified Yacht. She's an exciting boat to be on and I like her for a number of reasons. Let's take a look and see what they are. Starting with the helm, there are two 16-inch displays flanking a 13-inch cat display. Compass is mounted directly in line with this leather wrapped steering wheel. All the electrical components are to both sides, including the engine controls, which are just to the right, with a remote control for the forward displays right alongside that. Electrical switches are to both sides of the steering wheel. And rather than just go through every single detail on this panel, let's suffice it to say that there's everything that you could possibly need on an ocean going yacht. Indicator lights all over on the left hand side go from red to green. You want all green when you're underway. If anything's red, something's wrong that you need to take care of. Additionally, one, two, three bilge pump counters. When the bilge pumps go on, they start activating this timer. Right now they're all at zero. So if I come here tomorrow and one of these is not at zero, I know I've got a problem. Something's leaking. The seats are from Pompanet. Observers are to both sides of the center operator's position. They have flip bolsters. They adjust fore and aft, high-rise seat backs, and flip armrests. But I have to say, of all the features at this helm, probably my favorite feature is the remotely activated yacht controller, allowing us to dock this boat from anywhere on board. This in addition to giving us joystick functionality. Forward of the console, there's a tempered glass windshield with a wiper washer. This is a great feature to have when we're underway. Now the 650F is definitely a cruising boat. It's made for distance cruising so we've got it on autopilot right now and we're just cruising along and i'm monitoring the systems that's pretty much how this is going to be and it's very simple to do it's an owner operator's boat i also like that there's a remote control for the autopilot so if i do see something ahead of me i can just make a couple of hits on the remote control to avoid whatever it is in front of me whether it be traffic mooring ball crab pot something along those lines there are two ways to access the engine room. One is through this hatch right in the aft deck. This is the one you would use if you were underway. There's an additional entrance from the cruise quarters at the transom, and that's the one I like to use, especially if we're not underway. So let's take a look at that one. This is a watertight door. It closes flush to the transom. And inside, features of the cruise quarters start with a port hand berth, 72 inches by 32 inches. There's a 24 inch TV just over it. Breaker panel at the foot of the berth. To the starboard side, there's a shower, sink, electric flush toilet. And the engine room is accessed through this large door. This engine room has been designed for the owner operator, laid out to provide easy access to systems. The main attraction, the twin 1136 horsepower CAT C18 A certs. We can hear the 20 kW generator running. Sea strainer right alongside. Notice the sea strainers for those are located right in the center, as are all the checkpoints for the two engines. Just outboard, got a sea strainer for the Seakeeper 9 gyro, which is located underneath the master berth. Forward, fuel strainers, oil change system. Notice we have sight tubes in between the fuel filters. Over to the port hand side. Fixed firefighting system, battery chargers, and our isolators, so we can charge all the batteries on either the engines or the shore power. And just alongside the entrance is the compressor for the Dometic air conditioning system. This is a chilled water system that sends cool water throughout the boat via titanium plumbing. Here's the ladder and the hatch going to the cockpit deck. And notice the heavy deck drains. That's part of a requirement for the CEA Ocean certification. You have to be able to get rid of shipped water and get it back overboard very quickly, so that's why we have the large deck drains. At the top of the stairs to both sides, there are 50 amp shore power cables. They're 75 feet each, and they're on electric cable master reels. Now there's an ACS switching system, so we can connect to shore power via either one of these 50 amp shore power connections, or we can connect with both of them and it gets combined to 100 amp. So if we have the electrical system loading up fully, 
the dishwasher going, the washer dryer going, the hair dryer's going, the vacuum cleaner's going, everything. We're not gonna overload this system in trip breakers. Working our way up the sides, we've got a 12 inch cleat, a grab handle, and then under a hatch, there's a 13 inch cleat. We can run that line out the back or to the side through chafing gear, and just ahead of the cleat, there's space for a warping winch. This, of course, repeated to the opposite side. We access the side decks from three 10 inch steps to both port and starboard. Side decks measure 16 inches wide, rails come up 28 inches. Right at midship, there's a fuel fill for both the starboard and port tank. So it doesn't matter which side we pull the boat up onto, we can fill both tanks from either side. At midship, the rail has an opening gate. There are mounts for a ladder just underneath. There's a 13 inch cleat. As we continue forward, there's another 13 inch cleat. And that brings us fully forward to the ground tackle. There's a Maxwell electric windlass leading out to a davit that is mounted flush to the deck. There's a lock for the anchor and then a chain keeper. Foot control switches are right alongside and just outboard of that, 13 inch cleats with chafing gear right outside of that. Coming forward from the salon, there's a monitoring station just up above and I really like being able to see things at a glance. Is the generator still on? Yep, it is. Just outside the master stateroom, it's the vessel's main electrical panel. Got five 12240 panels and two 24 volt DC panels. I notice right alongside, there's an inverter controller, so this boat comes standard with an inverter. Just below that are generator controls. The Neptuna 650F has a length overall of 66 feet 4 inches, a beam of 16 feet 7 inches, and a draft of 4 feet 8 inches. With an empty weight of 78,000 pounds, 25% fuel, 50% water, and four people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 81,350 pounds. With a pair of 1,136 horsepower CAT C18 Acerts, turning 41 by 41 five-bladed props, and run up to 2340 RPM, our speed topped out at 32.2 knots. That produced an efficiency of 0.3 nautical miles per gallon, which stayed consistent down to 1500 RPM and 14.3 knots. If we run her at the manufacturer's recommended cruise setting of 80% load, that will be at 2050 RPM and 26.1 knots. That translates into a 96.5 gallon per hour fuel burn and a range of 243.3 nautical miles. If distance is the goal, drop it down to a hull speed of 9.7 knots where she'll realize a fuel burn of 14 gallons per hour and a range of 623.9 nautical miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 1,000 gallon total fuel capacity. She's very responsive to the helm. Get her at cruise speed, put her into a hard overturn, she'll turn 180 degrees inside of 30 seconds. And the turning radius was I want to say three boat lengths, so that's really responsive for a boat in this category and size. We've got you know, 15 mile an hour winds blowing on Lake Ontario here, so it's not giving us much to work with as far as sea conditions, but I did try to maneuver around our wake to try to bring out the worst in this vessel, and there is no worst in this vessel. We would cut through that two to three foot wake with barely even feeling it. No spray coming on board onto the windshield, certainly nothing up into the windows of the flying bridge. So very dry ride. Came around again and went across the wake from a following sea perspective, if you will. And I did it with my hands off, expecting that we would be getting some wandering, pushing the stern around a little bit. So hands off, going following sea, nothing. Straight tracking, nice and true. This hull is just absolutely remarkable for an ocean-going vessel. It, it gives it its CEA category. Even better is the handling conditions at the dock. She's so easy to dock because the props are large, so just little shot into gear gives you good movement, especially using differential thrust. So if you want to steer a little bit, you can use that differential thrust. Bring one engine ahead or one engine back, and she responds to that. Even better is you've got that yacht controller that will allow you to bring her in nice and smoothly, and there are big thrusters on this boat. Uh, big bow and stern thrusters, so you've got plenty of horsepower to maneuver in and around the dock, especially if there's a crosswind or a cross current. I love looking at a boat like this from an owner-operator's perspective because mostly that's how I would use the boat, so how does it feel to me? And discovering that a boat like this is so docile and easily handled, it's a comfortable feeling. 
This boat has a big comfort level for being on and entertaining, but that's in another video. Be sure to look for it. For now, this is my full sea trial and performance evaluation of the 650F from Neptunus Yachts. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.